Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video will be discussing Laplace transform example 9.5 uh, from Signals and Systems book by Mr. Alexander and uh, sorry by Mr. Oppenheim. Now before we start uh, to solve question number 9.5 let me give you the concept of poles and zeros. We'll take help of uh, example 9.3 and 9.4 that we solved. This is the time domain part and the Laplace domain looks like this. Now for plotting we have to factorize all the terms. So uh, this one remains same. This is easy. You can easily factorize this. And now we can plot. So the top term or the numerator terms uh, when we put equal to zero this is called the zero value so at zero s minus one equal to zero that means s is equal to one that means at s is equal to one we'll have a zero so let's see this graph and at s equal to one we are putting a uh, zero a uh, circle representing zero now the pole part uh, the denominator part s plus one equal to zero that means s is minus one and similarly the other one is s is minus two at minus one and at minus two we put two cross and the cross represents a uh, pole so this was easy now uh, why we study this uh, briefly by analyzing the poles and zeros of a circuit one can determine the stability of the system so that is very important uh, knowing the location we can say that the system is stable or unstable then it gives an understanding about the transient response of the circuit then it gives an analysis about the frequency response of the circuit and also it is useful for designing circuits so where we have which point we need to avoid and which point we need to incorporate that we can uh, see from the pole and uh, zero diagram now this all you will be studying in the control system i have we we'll learn the plot of question 9.3. Now let's see question 9.4. So this is question 9.4. And as we have seen here, we have uh, factorized this in form of factor for plotting. Same here, we should have numerator and denominator in factorized form. And uh, it would take this shape that is s minus the root s1 multiplied by s minus s2 because this is a quadratic equation similarly this quadratic can be s minus s3 into s minus s4 and s plus 2 remaining now what are the values of uh, the roots you can calculate yourself or i'll use calculated so let's call the calculator and clear everything. First of all, your calculator should be cleared. So let's shift clear three for all equal sign for yes is now it's clear. Now we go to the mode and we'll select mode five for equation. This is equation mode five. And since our equations are quadratic equations, so we'll take three. And now it is asking for the values of the quadratic equations or the coefficients. So A in the first case is two, numerator, equal sign. Then is the B, five, equal sign. And C is 12. equal sign and then again we press equal sign to get the roots 
So this is the first root x1, which we are calling here s1. And we can write it in decimal forms. So it's, so it's minus 1.25 plus 2.1656. So we can write 2.11 i or j. And similarly, uh, in the part 2 of the root, that is x2. So we again press x2 is here. And this one also we press SD to get into uh, the decimal form. So these are the two roots of the uh, numerator that we got. And similarly, we can get the roots of the denominator. We call the calculator again. Clear this. And now for the second one, or the denominator is 1. And 2 equal 2 and equal 10 equal sign. So the first root is minus 1 plus 3i minus 1 3i equal sign. Second root is minus 1 minus 3i or minus j3 and this one will be s minus 2. How do we plot? Let's plot the zeros first. So the zero you can see is minus 1.25. This is minus 1 point. Draw the line so slightly more. There is minus 1.25. And then on the imaginary axis, it is plus j 2.1. This is uh, j2, so slightly up 2.1 and minus. 2.1. So the zeros we have plotted, and now we'll plot the poles. Minus one, so minus one, and plus j3. So we'll go up to this point. Okay. Plus j3. Second one is minus one, minus j3, and the third one is minus two. So. For pole, we have used the cross, and for zero, we have used a zero or O. The example, this is the example, five. We have already uh, uh, solved this, this part, ET, UT will be one over S plus one, Laplace transform, similarly Laplace transform of E 2 T U T will be 1 divided by S minus 2. We have already solved these in uh, question number 9.1, 9.2. What about delta T? We don't know what is the transform of delta T. So we have to use the formula to find a Laplace transform of delta T. And you know the formula is integration delta T E minus S T. Now what is delta T? If you see this diagram, delta t is a function which is called impulse function also, a direct delta function. Its value at zero time is infinite and overall area is equal to one. At all other places, its value is zero. So that means we can take delta t as one. And since it is zero at all other places, therefore our limit will be only. 0 to 0. So 0 to 0 value is 1 e raised to the power minus s and t is 0. So this will become 1. So the net value will be 1. And this is not depending on the, uh, uh, this has only one value at uh, uh, t is equal to 0. Therefore, this function is valid for all s which is valid for any value of s in the uh, s domain. That means the ROC or region of convergence of Laplace of delta t is the entire s plane. So we can draw it like this. This was the, um, the diagram, s plane diagram. And this line shows that this ROC is all over the plane. 
And so our answer now will be, this one became one. This is one over delta plus one, multiply is four over three. And similarly, this is one over three and one over S minus two. So this, this is the net value. Now, what about ROC? So first of all, we have known this one uh, is in, on, over the entire plane. We have also learned earlier that S plus one is equal to zero, means S equal to minus one. That means, and because it is the right-sided function ut, so this will be, uh, ROC will be greater than minus one. So this is minus one point, ROC is greater than minus one. And similarly, in this case, ROC will be greater than plus two. This is plus two and ROC is greater than plus two. Now, as we have discussed earlier also that we actually take the intersection of two function or three function as the ROC. So when these three, you take intersection, this is common in all three. Therefore, this will be our uh, ROC applicable to the total function. We can say that real S is greater than two as our ROC. And now if you want, uh, you can take uh, the LCM and solve this, shown these steps. And so this is the uh, final value of xs. And now this was the, uh, what we call ROC. And now we can plot zero and um, pole. So S minus one equal to zero, that means that S is equal to one, there will be two zeros because of the square. So S, S is equal to plus one, we have put in two zeros. Then at S plus one, that means S is equal to minus one, there will be a pole and S minus two is equal to zero, that means that S is equal to two, there will be a pole. So this is the uh, pole and uh, uh, zero diagram. And we know that RES is greater than two, not, it does not include this line, it should be greater than this. So that is how you can show. I hope you've been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments. Thank you. Okay, just one point. Uh, there are several properties which you can study from the book. One of the properties says that the rational function or rational Laplace transform, now rational is something in the form of quotient form, one polynomial divided by another polynomial. The ROC does not contain any poles. And that is why I was saying that this ROC does not include this pole. 